intrigue save. Because this is the, the play that I decided to start off in. So we are in the 1066 uh, starting date, which means that a lot of this is no longer tribal. It means the Holy Roman Empire is formed and we're in it. <clears throat> Why did I choose this starting date? Um, I don't really know. Uh, oh yeah, because I wanted to try playing as Holland. Since I'm from Amsterdam, I figured it would make sense to make a Dutch ruler. And uh, I figured having all of those Viking neighbors come by all the time was not the most fun thing to be. So being in Holland means that we are um, the vassal of the Holy Roman Empire. That makes us fairly safe from immediate neighbors, but it also means that we have a lot of infighting and intrigue to do. A, uh, a very, we are, um, here we are Dutch. If I were to start at the earlier starting date, uh, it would actually be a Norse, uh, religion, but the Dutch, uh, do count as the central Germanic culture. So, um, I decided to play as the Duke of Holland. Uh, it's a bit of an unfortunate position to be in because, uh, if I want to get more titles, within um, the empire, my immediate neighbor has a lot more land than I do. So that is not actually a great target. What we can, of course, do is say, uh, take our um, uh, bishop and get fabricate claims on Luxembourg, because Luxembourg is not that big. We might be able to take it. So, um, when I clicked Holland to see, huh, let's see if I can play as my own home uh, place, I wound up with this guy, Duke Dirk de Vijfde Florisson van Holland. So that's me. I'm Duke Dirk. And uh, guess what? Duke Dirk might be just, which gives a penalty to intrigue, but he is cynical, sadistic, fickle, and curious. So I figured, ha, huh, how about we make Duke Dirk into our very own Joffrey Baratheon. Because, as it turns out, in Crusader Kings 3, dread is a thing. What is dread, you might say? Well, dread is basically how much people fear you. When playing Crusader Kings 2, it always surprised me how your ability to do uh, social stuff was restricted to basically likability. If people like you, they do what you want, and if people don't like you, they don't do what you want. Traditionally, medieval rulers tended to have fear as a very important factor as well, and CK3 actually introduces that in the form of dread. And so, um, as you do nasty stuff like torture and execution and all kinds of things, you can make people fear you, and then they obey you not because they like you, but because they fear you. This makes tyrannical playthroughs way more doable. So, we are now going to be playing as Duke Dirk Florison of Holland, and we are going to make him into a Joffrey. Now, let's see, I think I can change my education traits somewhere. I should probably do that. Um, where is that? Where do I see my education traits? No. Ah, here we go. So right now I'm focusing on diplomacy, but of course we want to focus on intrigue because intrigue gives us some very, very nice options. This also means that we need to be taught how to do intrigue because for those of you who haven't noticed, our little Joffrey is only 12 years old right now. This is Holland. This is the Duchy of Holland. This is the uh, the county of Holland, the county of Westfriesland. So yeah, we, we don't have a lot of land yet. This will improve over time, I hope, with the proper introduction of blades and <coughs> armies. Right, so let's see if there is anyone who would be able to teach me in the wise ways of Skullduggery. Now, it uh, apparently has this sorted by health right now. I don't care if the person raised me, who raises me is healthy. 
I want to make sure that they're good at stabbing people. Let's see, Reinhardt is currently my steward. He should probably be my spy master instead. He's paranoid and just and callous and an elusive shadow. Okay. This guy I would not mind learning Skullduggery from. It also makes him like me more, which is good, because, you know, someone who's good with blades and in charge of my well-being not liking me is probably a fairly temporary affair, right? Okay. Um, we are not currently betrothed to anyone. Uh, we're 12, we can't marry yet, you have to be 16 for that. But we can find someone to be betrothed to if we want to. And uh, actually, let's find someone who shares an interest with me. 22. Okay, so obviously the uh, the age difference is a bit of an issue, especially because you want um, a bunch of uh, uh, offspring because, you know, someone needs to inherit your title, preferably someone good. So let's have a look if we can find someone who's also good with a blade of a reasonable age. Oh, hello, Cecile. Look at that. She's uh, she's good with uh, daggers and stuff, which is nice. Um, I get an alliance because she's actually from a noble house. But most importantly, hello. So um, you don't just get uh, the, um, <clears throat> the, the traits that you learn. You also have genetics in this game. And one of the best uh, genetic traits that you can have is genius. I mean, plus five to every stat and plus 30% XP on your lifestyle. This is really, really, really good. So there's a 19 year old, so she'll be 23 by the time we get married, um, with great stats, which also help all my other things. An alliance, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. Let's see if her dad's okay with that. Oh yes, he is, her dad. <laughs> Look at this. Why is her dad okay with me taking his daughter? Because he's terrified of me. Ha <laughs> ha. Awesome. Awesome. Now, uh, I don't get any prestige because she's, uh, she's not as important as I am, of course. But yeah, yeah. He's terrified of me and my family is cool and stuff, which is why he's willing to take this. So hello, genius um, fiance. We don't want to open the encyclopedia right now. Your primary heir is of the wrong dynasty. That's okay. I intend to have kids with my genius wife in a couple of years. This, uh, this overview is actually really useful. The issues tab, it gives you uh, options. Declare war. I don't think I'm going to go and do that. See, the, the suggestion says you could declare war on King Philippe. Yeah. That... That looks like a losing proposition to me. I mean, you can actually have a look at this and then it tells you how their military sizes and how your military sizes and stuff. But simply looking at the map will tell me enough right now. So thank you very much for that helpful suggestion, but we will not be declaring war on King Philippe. Uh, our bishop doesn't like me much. Okay, well, uh, I mean, we have some stuff in common, um, but he's a pretty de decent bishop, so I'm not removing him just yet. There's an active election going on in the Holy Roman Empire, but I am not an elector. I need to get a different title before I get to vote there, so we don't really care about that right now. This is a nice overview. Hey, by the way, you are nth in line for a bunch of titles, so I'm apparently third in line for two duchies. Now, I'm a kid, which means I'm not allowed to murder people just yet. But uh, if you know your way around an assassination, then uh, this is actually a really helpful overview to figure out who do I need to kill in order to get the land that is supposed to be mine, but isn't yet. Okay. Uh, another important thing to check out is, of course, our council. Is there anyone here who is not really good at... Dude, seriously. My spy master has a, uh, an intrigue of five. I'd like to live to the age of 16, please. Let's see if we can get a better. All right, Reinhard. Now, Reinhard is currently my steward um, with a stewardship of 13. 
which is not awful, but I'd rather have him as my spy master with an intrigue of 20. Now I don't have to fire anyone. I can simply swap their skills around. Yes, please. That way no one gets upset. However, <laughs> we have another problem because my steward, my new steward is now someone with a uh, stewardship of one. So that's not great either. Uh, if I were to replace him with this guy, that would be pretty bad. But before we do, let's have a look. Because my steward has a... Oh, whoops. Has a marshal of 13. And my marshal has a marshal of 9. It's annoying how similar those things sound. So I can swap out my marshal for my steward. Still, no one gets upset because they remain on the council. I still have a shitty steward, but now I have a good marshal. And a good spy master. Does my steward have any jobs he can do? Three, nine, three, eight, ten. Whoops. The only thing that he's not super shitty at is still way poorer than the guy with 17 that's currently doing it. So that means that my steward will not remain my steward. I'm sorry, Mayor of Rotter Rotterdam. Um, this guy's already my, my uh, spy master, so... Ambrose, my knight, will be my new steward. This means that Edward will actually be upset with me because I fired him from the council, and even more upset with me because he's one of my important vassals. So, um, that's better. I like this. Did I already set him to fabricate a claim? Yes, I did. So, Bishop Clauart is currently fabricating a claim on Luxembourg. Let's see, Chancellor Stang. Uh, I can choose between foreign affairs and domestic affairs. In this case, uh, people of my own level count as foreign. So even though we are in the same Holy Roman Empire together, um, interacting with the other dukes counts as foreign affairs because I am duke level. All right. Uh, taxes, this seems fine. Important thing is the spy master can do a bunch of things. He can disrupt schemes, which uh, prevents schemes against me. Um, he can support schemes, which means my own schemes get better. But right now, what I'd like him to do is find secrets, because I can't really do uh, streams just yet. Uh, sorry, uh, do uh, uh, schemes just yet much. So what I'll do is I'll have him find secrets, and I think a good place for that would be the capital of the empire, right? Capital of the Holy Roman Empire seems like a place that would have a lot of intrigue going on. So let's make sure that Reinhardt finds out all there is to it. All right, all right. I'm probably going to be live for about three hours today <coughs> because of kids stuff. So I think I've done most of the important immediate stuff. Let's go ahead and unpause. I am betrothed, or will be in a moment, which means I have an alliance with uh, this guy who lives over there. That's fine, he's in France. Having French allies is not awful. Um, we would like to have more land. Oh yeah, an important thing is in um, CK2, a lot of uh, things such as fabricated claim were percentage per month based or percentage per uh, year based, right? So you can see troops starting to walk around. So that's uh, animated and stuff. Nice. So our fights. The, um, they changed that so that it's a progress meter which uh, helps with a lot of uh, uh, frustration, I think, on the, the coaches. Yep. So this is, uh, this makes it a bit, feel like you have a bit more control over what's going on. So having a look at our uh, domain, we have uh, our county and we can do stuff. I have fishing net weavers, which give me more tax. Okay, fine. I can build stuff. Walls and towers, farms and fields, pastoral lands, hunting grounds, barracks, military camps. Uh, I don't have the money for that right now, but I'm sure I will. Oh, 
I have not yet found any secrets. Well, that's because the game just started. I'm sure that it will be uh, a villainous, uh, a hive of scum and villainy, something like that. A sinful archbishop has been exposed. Christ Catholicism has decreased its fervor because of it. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, piety is not going to be my strong suit. <laughs> I'm losing piety per month. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, it's not my uh, my MO anyway. I'm going to speed things up just a little bit since I am a child and I don't have a lot to do. Um, from what I've seen in my uh, off-stream playthrough, my uh, the, the, the experience of being a child is definitely more entertaining than it was in CK2. Also, I don't think I have a... Uh, an adult actually in charge of my uh, my duchy. Ah, that's fine. Keep it up. We'll be fine. Do I want to create men at arms? Sure. Bound to come in handy, right? No regencies. Exactly. That uh, that makes me pretty happy, especially since I decided to do my first playthrough as a child. So I don't have great stats or anything, but that's fine. It's all part of the experience. Oh, I've overtaxed Westfriesland. As I look upon a young Naper walking by, sweaty with labor but a blush on her cheeks, I am entranced. What is this feeling? This longing? Girls are so fascinating. Okay, my character is a heterosexual. Considering the fact that I don't really have heirs, that is kind of a good thing. Uh, Duke Floris is now a heterosexual boy. Yeah, no, keep digging. There will be secrets. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit pity that I'm just. So just used to be purely positive, but in CK3 it actually has a uh, negative value on intrigue, which makes perfect sense to me. So yeah, uh, my my immediate neighbor is way too powerful. He's uh, he's not someone I'm gonna want to go to war with anytime soon. But the Duke of Luxembourg, I might be able to take. So uh, I'm hoping for that. Ah, here we go. Well done, Reinhardt. While performing his duties as my spy master, Reinhardt has uncovered a secret held by Duke Gottfried of Lower Lorraine. Oh, that's actually the guy. That's actually my neighbor. He has secretly taken uh, the. Uh, Baroness, who is also married, uh, as his lover. This is this is useful info. This is this is really good. Yeah, the reason he writes so many reports is because his spy, spy uh, his intrigue is so high, which means the progress bar for find secrets goes faster. That's that's kind of how that works. Yeah. So um, we also have uh, culture, obviously and innovations, which is basically the tech level. And each culture has a culture head, in this case, uh, that guy. And uh, as such, that, that person has uh, can have fascinations, so whatever tech they're interested in, and that tech will develop faster for people in that culture. So we're currently in the early medieval uh, innovation phase. And uh, sadly, as a tribal ruler, you can't get past the first one, so... No, I'm sure it'll be fine, Reinhardt. So we're getting some troops. Um, troops also have a uh, quality level, which basically tells you something about the uh, the composition of your uh, of your army. So this one counts as superior quality in part due to the 100 bowmen that are in there. What just happened? Oh, the corruption in Westfriesland is gone again. That's good. Ha-ha! Well done, Bishop Clauart. Greetings, I've prowled through documents both ancient and of less provenance, i.e. I made them up. Uh, I finally have enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lord of the county of Luxembourg. I could even argue you're the rightful lord of the Duchy of Luxembourg. Well, that's convenient. So, you have... Um, when you do the fabricate claims, you have... Uh, you normally get a claim on a county, but there's a chance you get a claim on the Duchy. So I can 
I can pay 69 gold, which is all I have, to get a claim on the county. But I can also pay 161 to get a claim on the duchy, which means we're going into debt. Hello, minus 91 gold. This will be fine, I'm sure. So now that he has finished this task, he is automatically going back to his standard. This is also different from CK2. Aha, Duke Otto of Meissen has also taken a secret lover. Oh yes, getting all, all the dirt on people. And I'll be able to make good use of that once I'm 16, which is almost born on January 1st. That's convenient. Blossoming friendship. I've spent a lot of time with Bertha recently, my sister. She's always asked the right questions, getting to the truth of every conversation. I'm never bored when I'm in with her. A better friend is hard to find. Okay, hello, sister. We are now friends. Ah, I mean, could be worse. <laughs> Our emperor has declared war on someone, somewhere. Can I see where? Who's that? This place. And more secrets. Oh. Duke Otto has also committed a sin most foul, a crime against God himself. Only someone truly sick would engage in carnal relations with their close family. Ha, I like this face that he's making. <laughs> like Reinhardt's like, dude, what the? Oh, you didn't really, did you? I now know an incestuous secret about Duke Otto. So... Yes, I'm getting all the dirt on the capital, and once I am good at my intrigue stuff, I'm, I'll be able to capitalize on that. <gasps> yes! All right! Not only am I 16, I've also gotten the intricate web weaver trait. That is the best intrigue trait, unless that changed, but I assume not. I'm still friends with Bertha. Okay. I lose the trait Curious. That's fine. That was a kid's trait. And I get Intricate Web Weaver. Yes, plus six Intrigue and plus 30% Intrigue Lifestyle Experience. I am a man. All right, let's have a look at what kind of man I am. My Intrigue is now up to 14. That's not awful, but we can do better. Because now I get to choose my Lifestyle. Choosing Intrigue, which I wanted to do, gets the bonus. So that's good. And so if I choose Skullduggery, I get plus three Intrigue and people are more likely to want in on my schemes. If I do Temptation, I get to screw around. Nice, but not for this play. Intimidation, Threats, Dread. I think I will go for that later. Hmm. Because there's, there's, uh, I, I'm, I'm not focusing on the seducer one for now. So the schemer and the torturer are the two that I want to do. And I think the torturer is more in line with the Joffrey role playing. Oh yeah, elusive shadow is the top one. True. So I didn't get the, the, the maxed out one. Correct. Um. So. Torturer is really more evil. Uh, you get stuff from torturing. Uh, you don't lose piety from torturing. Oh yeah, this one is cool. So there's another factor in the game called stress. And um, uh, stress is something you get when you, as the player, uh, have your character make decisions that go against their nature. So the kinds of decisions that would match their, their personality, uh, if you do that, you lose stress. But if you do something that goes against your, your character's nature, you gain stress. The torturer can actually get thriving in chaos, where he he gets better as he obtains more stress. So you get more, you get dread faster. Um, you actually get dread for tyranny. Um, people who fear you pay you more. Uh, your dread never goes back down. So the 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 dread has like a baseline value, which is based on your your character's personality. When you take actions that increase it above baseline, it'll gradually decay down. 
when you take actions that uh, decrease it below baseline, it'll gradually go back up. Unless you have Forever Infamous, in which case your dread will never go back down again. Um, prison Feudal Complex for uh, uh, better imprisonment chances. Torturer Trait, Prowess Dread Gain. I think I'm going to go for Schemer first and for Skullduggery, but I will go for Intimidation and Dread later on in life. Oh, yes. The Dread mechanic is definitely one of the most exciting things about CK3. I would agree. So, we've picked up Skullduggery, which means we're working towards becoming a Schemer, which is a plus five intrigue all of its own. So, yeah, yeah, we are, uh, we are doing this. So now my intrigue is 17, which is which is not bad. It'll get better. I mean, but it's it's okay for a 16-year-old. But yeah, you're right. Intricate intricate web weaver is not the top tier one. Okay, let's unpause, I guess. Time to make some airs. Oh yes. Uh, do I want money or do I want fame? Well, since I'm currently in debt and being in debt is bad, I will take the cash, the cold dough. I would, however, like a better look. Where, where do I find? Oh, well, that was fast. Damn, Dirk. I'm starting to have second thoughts about whether it's actually mine because we didn't. Well, okay. Oh, okay. That's convenient. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Uh, she is apparently already a criminal. She just happens to be pregnant within days of arriving at my court, huh? Okay. It's fine. As long as I can put my royal stamp on it, I don't care if the genius child is actually mine, as long as she counts as my, or he counts as my bloodline f towards the world, right? I mean, it's those genes with my, uh, a, a dirk is indeed a knife. That is correct. That's actually really convenient. Hadn't really thought about that. So where can I see my dude's, um, lifestyle option? Ah, I'll see them when I when I level up. That won't be that long. <coughs> so we have fabricated a claim on this duchy. Let's have a look, because now I should have a declare war on. No, not on King Philippe. You idiot. Let's see it, what this war would look like. Yes, he's got four thousand troops. Okay, that's not happening just yet. Who is his current heir? His current heir is a child. Huh. So what would happen if I were to, say, make him die? That might make my uh, military prospects better, right? Oh, come on. Come on. Takes about four years. Okay. Sure. There's a new son, Floris, and he's quick. That's not bad. That's not half bad. Let's call him Joffrey, of course. So yeah, you can automatically cho choose your name, your dad's name, her dad's name, someone in your family tree, a name from your religion or a name from your culture. But in this case, Joffrey it is. Joffrey Dirk's zone. All right. No, keep digging, dude. A faction. Now, this is interesting. Independence faction. Dare I join that? No. Because they'll they'll push without my consent, and then suddenly I'll be like a traitor and stuff. I want to be a traitor on my terms, not someone else's. Uh, okay, yeah. So, I've picked up some stress. You can see that in this meter here. Uh, so, my stress is now at 35 out of 300. 300 is the max. But I'll get a stress level at 100, which is mostly bad. Uh, the Duke of Flanders likes me better because my Chancellor is doing foreign politics. Okay. Nice. 
Nice, good job, that dude. So yeah, I've got a baby. I've got a son and he's quick, which means my uh, eugenics plan actually worked. Educate child. I'd like to do it myself. Yes, I'm now in charge of my son. That's good. As I push aside the sheets to lay down, I find a little scroll resting on my bolster. Someone has entered my chambers unnoticed? A chill runs down my spine as I carefully unroll the thick parchment. My heroic lion, lord of my heart, I can keep my feelings secret no longer. From this day on, I will do everything in my power to prove my loyal affections. We will see each other soon. Until then, dream of me, my love. Eternally yours, Duchess Cecile. Oh, it's from my wife. Ah. Uh, allow her to woo me or don't allow me to woo her to woo me. Well, since she's really good with a knife, I guess falling in love with her is probably safer than not falling in love with her. Right? I mean, she's better at this stuff than I am. So yeah, sure. Let's, let's do it. Let's, uh... Aha! A Duke of Austria also has a secret lover. This is all ammo that we're getting. We know so many secrets now. Alright, since we have a bit of money, I suppose what we can do is increase the size of our bowman man-at-arms thingy. Yay! I have a sister, and because my sister is my friend, uh, I lose stress. Nice. Nice. That's good stuff. So yeah, military progress as a uh, small duke in a big empire is not fast. <clears throat> Adela has decided that her time in Amsterdam has come to an end. The servants have packed her chest and she said her farewells. With Adela goes her claim on the county of Zeeland. If I want to press her it and make her my vassal, this is my last chance to make her stay. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's the war on France that the AI is telling me about. Hey, Adela, uh, bye. No, thank you. I'm I'm not even going to promise that. There's there's just no way. So we can also inspect our uh, our baronies. Yeah, sure. Keep digging. What? Well, again? This is good. This is progress. I mean, I'm 17 and she's pregnant with my second child. This is, uh, this is good. No, I don't want faith info. No, I don't want culture info. Unpleasant pleasantries. When I sent out invitations to a dance, I was looking forward to an evening of good company and frivolous fun. Instead, I found myself stuck in a dreadful conversation with my marshal, Major... Uh, Mayor Hubert. That's my dad's name. Hub. My deepest apologies, but there's an urgent situation which needs your attention, Duchess Cecile. Okay. Uh, the familiar voice belongs to none other than the Duchess. She winks at me as she gestures from, for Hubert to follow. So. Uh, a lesson in subterfuge from my wife. Nice. I can either get a intrigue lifestyle perk or I get five, a plus one intrigue for five years he has time for everyone she should know that hell no I'm not staying a moment okay yes let's learn intrigue from my wife that's nice I'm glad I picked a stabby wife I gained student of intrigue so my intrigue is now higher it is now whoa 21 that went fast Oh, my wife had a miscarriage. Fuck. No, I'm sad. Uh, okay. So, a heresy in Benevento. I assume that's somewhere down here. Uh, just show me where... Yeah, okay. 
do I want to also become a Waldenesian spending? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I have enough troubles as it is. Oh, there's a lot of people who are actually becoming Waldenesians. Ah, secret lovers. Who'd have thunk? Wait, that's the same duke. That's the duke that, that did his sister and two others. Okay. So can I see... I bet I can see all the secrets I have so far. Discovered schemes? Okay, no. Hooks and secrets. Yeah, so hooks are, are like favors. You can make them. You can earn them. So I can expose someone's secret, but I can also blackmail them saying, I will expose this secret if you don't tell me, uh, if you don't give me a hook. And the hooks allow you to do stuff. And some secrets give you a strong hook and some secrets give you a weak hook. So all of this is basically uh, political capital. However, blackmailing people does make them like you less, of course. The King of England has become English. Okay. Good to know, I suppose. So how's my military? 800 troops. Maybe maybe Luxembourg was a bit of a big... Big target. That's a theocracy. I, I bet I can get in trouble for trying to take a theocracy. A the theocracy, I should say. They don't have a lot of troops, though. She's a princess. That's that's also problematic. Because I need a target that is fairly doable. Preferably inside. Let's deal with this first. My wife is kneeling in the dust before me, hand above her heart. Bring you honor and happiness. How can I prove my love for you? Slay a wolf and bring me its pelt, which would give me prestige. I want a buffered companion. Kinky. Uh, get me a flower that gives me learning and prestige. Uh, we're going furry. Oh yeah. We are going furry. I thought long and hard, my little firebrand, she says as she gladly, gently places the basket onto my desk. What would the perfect companion for such a clever, independent creature as yourself be? And then it hit me. Nothing would fit you better than a cat. She removes the blanket covering the basket, revealing a little kitten. It looks up with me with its big blue eyes and begins to purr. I get a pet cat, which gives me intrigue and learning. That's actually really good. Welcome, Marshavon. Hi. Oh. All right. As the cat rests in my lap, contently purring, I ponder on the name. Uh, I will name the cat Onyxia. There we go. A duke to scare a local mystic with dubious morals and a fabricated omen. Perfect. Before the mystic leaves for Duke Conrad's court, there is but one question. Will my false omen be one of fortune or of doom? So part of my progress towards the murder him uh, scheme is that I can have him affected by bad news or good news. If he gets bad news, he'll have trouble sleeping and I gain progress or he becomes more vigilant and I lose progress. With a good omen, uh, he'll let his guard down, or uh, he grows more wary. Well, since I don't want him to do well, bad omen seems better. Aha! Ten years of a bad omen for the Duke of Luxembourg. Reinhardt has uncovered a secret. Uh, more secret lovers. Why haven't I leveled up? Ah, I have leveled up. This is this is important because I know that there is a way to make money from hooks. Enables the fabricate hook scheme. That's useful. Find secrets may also fabricate hooks. Okay, we're definitely doing that. Find secret progress, progress speed, kidnapper, disrupt. Okay. Uh, 
Ah, is selling, is, is making money off hooks not here? Hmm. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Was it somewhere else then? I, it would make sense for it to be here. Stewardship. Ah, okay. That would be probably in here somewhere. Ah, yes. All right. All right. That makes sense. So golden obligations is the one that will give us that. Okay. Then I, then I might actually, uh, I'm going to get better at collecting them first, but, um, picking that up is definitely worth it. So yeah, like you can see, multi-classing is definitely a thing. So. Enables the fabricator hook scheme. And you can change this every five years, I think. I think there was also a... Yeah, so that you actually have this little bar here that shows you uh, when you can uh, re uh, uh, reselect a new one. I see that my overlay has done some interesting things with the uh, uh, follow, but thanks for the follow, Demetrius. Yeah, so Crown Authority is still very much a thing in the game. You can see it here as well. Mm. So in order to raise it, you need to spend uh, prestige and you get, uh, you get more control over your vassals. They'll like you less, and uh, you need certain uh, uh, inventions in order to be able to do it. Oh, I remember this one. Becoming better at prestige. Uh, intrigue. Yes. It is a good beard. It's a very good beard. So my intrigue is now 22. A dark night can truly make the shadows in my castle's hallways come alive. The perceived risk for unsanctioned visitors rise ever higher for every unguarded corner spotted. If I alone can see this many faults, imagine what more people with a similar perspective could do. Pay 50 to uh, hire discreet agents, or I gain improved defenses, fortification level, and garrison size. It doesn't say what the top option actually gives me, other than money costs. And that's a lot of money. So I'm going to go ahead and improve the defenses just by clicking on this, I guess. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, remember to hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more of my content, then do press the subscribe button and the little bell, and I'll see you around.